Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Rosewood First Baptist Church. So glad to have you with us, worshiping with us this morning. This is the first Sunday of Advent. It's been quite some time 
uh, that I can recall that we've had Advent start actually in December. Believe it or not, many years Advent begins on a Sunday in November following uh, Thanksgiving usually. So uh, we get to celebrate uh, the whole month long here in December and we're kicking it off this morning with this hanging of the green service. So uh, if you're here visiting or if you're here uh, with family or a friend, uh, we are so glad that you're here, your honored guest. Uh, there is a connect card in front of you. If you are visiting, we'd just like to get to know you and your family a little bit better. You can help us by filling that out and then dropping into offering boxes. We do offering boxes here for collections, uh, for tithes as well. So the Lord lays that upon your heart to do so. We're just so glad to have you here this morning and uh, looking forward to working with you in just a moment. I'm going to call Stacy to come and give us just a few announcements. Glad that you're here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, just a few announcements this morning. This Saturday at 9 a.m., we will be having our breakfast with Santa. If you are interested in volunteering to help cook pancakes, bacon, sausage, please see me or call me. Um, and also, we are doing our final collection of Angel Tree presents and the food drive. Um, all of that's due by December 12th. If you have any questions on that, Call me or Pastor Tim. Um, we still have between our churches about 80 angels that need to be purchased for. Um, we had more this year than we've ever had in the past. So if you feel led, please help so we can fulfill those Christmas wishes for the children. And then on December 17th, we will have our children's Christmas play at 6 p.m. in the Family Life Center. As we begin this morning service with prayer, I just bring your attention to those in our uh, prayer uh, concerns list, so family and friends, as well as church membership. Uh, continue to lift up those who have lost loved ones in recent days. Uh, continue to remember the McGinnis family and the passing of, of Robbie, and, and also um, Louis Rivera's family and the passing of his sister-in-law. Uh, let us go to the Lord in prayer and lift up these ones on our hearts and minds this morning. Most gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we come to you to give you praise, to give you thanks for this wonderful season that we have to look forward to, the season of Advent, the coming of Christ into the world that we celebrate, not just this time of year, but each and every day, Lord, as we, we realize and we acknowledge, Lord, that you're with us. Lord, as we approach your throne of grace today, Lord, we're doing just that, realizing that you're with us and that our loved ones, our friends, our family, uh, those that we care about in this community, and those uh, that are seeking to, to lift up the name of Jesus on high, the church families uh, that are represented here in this area, Lord, we just lift up all of them today, Lord. We just ask that this might be a glorious Christmas season, Lord, as we proclaim the coming of Christ, and that he's coming again, and that, Lord, the, the Savior of the world came to be with us, and to show us how to live, how to love, and in the character of God, Lord, and to provide the pathway for us to have the full and abundant life now and life everlasting through the forgiveness of sins and his shedding of his blood upon the cross. But Lord, before the cross, there was the birth, the coming into the world. So Lord, we, we celebrate Christ's life. And Lord, we ask that you just be with us, Lord. Guide us during this season, Lord. Open our hearts to what you have for us, Lord. Uh, may we truly be joyful because you have placed such joy within us. In Jesus' name, amen. of Christmas for Christians is such an important time of the year, such an important time of our calendar. As we begin the Christian year, we celebrate the holy season known as Advent. It is a time when we prepare ourselves for the coming of our Messiah. Advent means coming. 
We celebrate these days of Advent in expectation and preparation for Christ's arrival. Advent has been enriched by Christian traditions to reflect its Christian meaning. It proclaims the revelation of God's love as expressed in Christ's birth in a humble stable, his sacrificial death on the cross, and his victorious resurrection. It points to the hope of Christ coming again as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Advent makes innkeepers out of all of us and asks each of us to make room for the arrival of Christ the King. Let us today prepare him room in our hearts, our lives, and our homes. May we pray. Dear Lord, we are here in this house, your house, Father, to celebrate the advent of your Son, our Lord. This is a joyous occasion, O oh God, because our lives have been enlightened by the coming of Jesus. And so, with the lighting of candles and singing of carols, we praise you, Father. We praise you, O oh Lord. With the placing of the wreaths, the decorating of the trees, the ringing of the bells, we honor your unspeakable love for us. Open our hearts, Lord, that we may joyfully welcome your Son. Open our eyes, Lord, that we may be the, see the beauty of his coming. Open our ears, Father, that we may hear anew the angel's song. And open our lips that we may tell others of his glory and his peace. Amen. Please remain seated as we sing Old Little Town of Bethlehem. <laughs>
tradition of the Christmas bells. From Exodus 28, verse 35. Aaron must wear it when he is he ministers. The sound of bells will be heard when he enters the holy place before the Lord, and when he comes out, so that he will not die. Bells have always produced joy and excitement. Bells were used in religious services long before our Savior's birth. But now, for centuries, the bells of churches in every land have rung the glad news of the birth of Jesus. These bells would ring for an hour before midnight on Christmas Eve, as if to warn the powers of darkness of the approaching birth of the Savior. Then, right at midnight, they would change to a joyous healing, ringing out the excitement, Christ is born. You guys stop to be like that? Let's try it together.
from John chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of the world. The evergreens and the advent wreaths symbolize everlasting life we find in Christ Jesus. The circular wreath symbolizes life without end. The candles remind us of Christ, who is the light of the world. Within the wreath, we place four candles and one large white candle in the center. Today, the first Sunday of Advent, we light the first candle, the candle of hope. The second candle is the candle of peace. The third candle, the pink candle, is the candle of joy. The fourth candle is purple and represents the candle of love. On Christmas Eve, we will light the white candle, located in the center of the Advent wreath, which represents Christ, and serves to remind us that God should be the center of our lives. Thousands of years ago, a journey began in heaven. Destination, Earth. The most significant journey we will ever make is toward the one who brought us eternal life. Please join us in singing the first Noel.
of the Christian candy cane. From Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. And there were shepherds living out in the flocks nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all my people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Did you know that the candy cane was created to honor Jesus? If the candy cane is held upright, it is in the shape of a shepherd's staff, which the shepherd uses as he watches over his sheep. Jesus is our shepherd. If the candy is turned upside down, it becomes the letter J for Jesus. The Bible tells us that by Jesus' stripes we are healed. Jesus was beaten and stripes were put on his back. The candy cane was made with red and white stripes to represent the blood of Jesus, who washed away all of our sins. One bold stripe represents one God who is Father to us all. The three stripes, fine stripes, represent the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Today as you leave, you will be presented with a candy cane. of the Christmas candle from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 the people that walk in darkness have seen a great light those who dwell in a land of deep darkness on them has the light shined long ago before the celebration of Christmas candles were used to signify Christ as the light of the world in medieval times there was a legend which said that on Christmas Eve, the Christ child wandered throughout the world, looking for places where he would be welcome. Those who loved him, hoping he might find their homes, placed lighted candles in the windows to invite him in. No one, of course, knew for sure how he might appear. Perhaps he would come dressed in the rags of a beggar, or he might come as a poor and lonely child. Might he come in the form of, dis of a disabled person, who was put out to roam the streets of the city. So it became customary for devout Christians to welcome into their homes all who knocked on their door on Christmas Eve. To turn away may have meant the rejection of the Christ child who had come in unfamiliar garb. During the Advent season, we remember that the Christ child is wandering along on our streets looking for homes where he will be given warmth and shelter. The candles in the windows of our homes and churches symbolize to all that Christ is our guest. Congregation, will you please stand and sing with us, Shine On. <laughs>
Christ child at Christmas, the crash. The truth is that there never was Christmas before Jesus was born. Year after year, the evergreen trees grew in the forest, but no one came to get them. No one thought of loading them down with ornaments or lighting them with candles and lights. Boys and girls grew up without the thought of a Christmas carol, a Christmas tree, or even a Christmas gift. That was before Christ was born. God looked down from his heaven and saw upon the earth the greatness of sin and the sorrow it brought to each of us. He decided to come down on earth, not in royal robes of splendor, but as a humble baby, to be born in a stable, cradled in a manger, and crucified on a cross for the sins of the world. Figures of a crash will be placed on the communion table and a cradle will be placed at the foot of the cross, reminding us that this baby was born to die for the sins of the world.
Luke's account of the birth of Christ. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. There were shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior is born. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared, with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary said all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. May God add his richest blessing to the reading of his word this day. <clears throat> this brings about the conclusion of our service this morning. So if you have come this morning... Seeking, seeking hope, seeking peace, seeking Christ. I encourage you to act as the Spirit has led you this morning. If he's led you this morning to come and make a decision, I'll be down front to receive any that need to make decisions this day, whether it's to accept Christ as your Savior. As he is coming into the world, we're celebrating his coming, his first coming. He will come again. And so we invite you to come on his behalf this morning, and I would love to share with you how you can receive him as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you're looking for a church family. We'd love to have you here, a part of Rosewood First Baptist Church, or maybe something else uh, that the Spirit has laid upon your heart, and you just need to, to come and kneel at the altar and give it to the Lord this morning as we close in this song. Mm -hmm.
much decorating, having the music ready requires a lot of work and it requires a lot of people willing to give up their time to help. So this morning, if you were used in part of the uh, reasons why we do the things we do, by bringing lights or whatever in, thank you so much. Your gift has helped us become more heightened and aware of why we do these things. Why do we have the lights to bring we need all of this? The sound booth is such an integral part of what we do. So I thank them so much. <laughs> and Bill Barnett and Lee Peden, they keep me straight. That's a full time job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The choir, what you have to say about these ladies? They are the most faithful, giving ladies. Week after week after week, they come and sing. They're few and mighty, but not few in number, but mighty in spirit. So thank you. For that. <laughs> and now all the point set is, if you would like to take yours home today, you're welcome to do so, as we stated on the uh, sheet. The one thing I want to leave you with: all the gifts we bring. All the lights we hang, all the candy canes we put out, all the poinsettias and the wreaths and the garlands are wonderful. They help create the gift of giving. And one thing I didn't mention a while ago are all the ladies that spent hours out here hanging the wreaths, the garlands, all the putting the tree up. Didn't they do a fabulous job? All these are wonderful things, and I think Jesus goes right along with sharing the story. But the most wonderful thing of all is having Jesus come and live within you. That is the true meaning of Christmas. We get caught a lot of times with the hustle and bustle. But let's break it down to its purest, simplest element. And that is, Jesus wants to live in you. So today, I invite you to ask him into your heart to live. Thank you. One more thanks, word of thanks uh, to Miss Judy for organizing and orchestrating all this for us this morning. I think I'll we'll round of applause. With you. met with you here in this place, for we've experienced your spirit move and instill in us a sense of joy and celebration, uh, Lord, of your coming into the world. Lord, may we take that joy, that spirit of, of celebration to the world, Lord, as we leave these doors, as we go into the world, as we go about our business this week, school and work and home and wherever we go, Lord, may we take the name of Christ with us. May we let his light shine with us so they may see us celebrating him and see the works that he's doing through us and praise our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I would be remiss if I didn't thank Anita Poland, our pianist, for providing all the music. Thank you. Thank you, Merry Christmas. Thank you for coming.